so I'm excited to introduce uh, Dr. Juan Caicedo, who comes to us all the way from the Broad Institute. Uh, he started at the Broad in uh, Ann Carpenter's lab as a postdoc, and most recently has started his own group uh, where he's been developing um, machine learning and deep learning techniques uh, for processing micro microscope images. And today he's going to be talking uh, to us about using cell painting uh, to phenotype variants of uncertain significance. So please welcome one. Hi, everybody. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much to the organizers for this kind invitation. And I'm excited to uh, share with you the work that we're doing, uh, phenotyping variants of unknown significance using deep learning. So uh, genome sequencing efforts have identified millions of somatic mutations in cancer. And um, most of those mutations are of unknown significance. Uh, at the same time, hundreds of genetic tests are being registered every year. And also thousands of variants are reported for cancer, heart disease, and rare diseases. So uh, given that we have a poor understanding of uh, what variants are important in order to treat some of the diseases, uh, we need some methods or methodologies to uh, scan and understand what is the functional impact of those mutations. In this study, we focus on lung adenocarcinoma, which is one of the cancers with highest mutation rates and uh, some of the mutations may accumulate uh, as passenger mutations in order to, uh, and, and that's useful for us to uh, validate uh, some of the methodologies that we develop. <clears throat> and uh, a few years ago, uh, Alice Berger, uh, who is now at the Fred Hodge Institute, uh, together with some other researchers at the Broad Institute, uh, started an initiative to profile uh, cancer mutations in lung adenocarcinoma using gene expression signatures. They developed a method uh, to understand or classify whether a specific mutation is impactful or neutral. And they did this using A549 cells, uh, using open reading frames with uh, approximately 194 variants and multiple replicates, using the L1000 uh, platform to characterize uh, the variants. They showed that uh, using this approach, they can uh, characterize the impactful mutations and identify which ones are neutral at high throughput, which was one of the goals of this study. Uh, now, what we want to do with this uh, new study is basically recapitulate the findings that they did using gene expression signatures but in this case, we want to do uh, image -based, uh, uh, the image-based approach. So uh, before explaining how we do that, uh, just uh, you know, to uh, emphasize that images are a rich source of information and we can uh, find or we can use all sorts of uh, imaging assays to capture morphology and understand biological systems in many different ways from muscle structures to a complex patient biopsies. Uh, and there are many other types of uh, imaging types, such as mass spectrometry uh, or even 3D techniques and time lapse. Images have a lot of information that we can utilize to characterize the phenotypes uh, of the biological systems under the study. And uh, even that uh, those beautiful images have a lot of information most of the time, researchers only use a single feature that is measured on cells or uh, in the images. For instance, in this specific uh, screen, uh, researchers were using uh, imaging in order to uh, quantify the amount of DNA content in single cells. So this ends up to a very specific phenotype, which is the cell size, which indicates for uh, this leukemia study, whether a treatment is being, um, successful or not into recovering the healthy state of the cells. Uh, and just using that single feature, they were able to identify certain treatments that uh, were promising or candidates for clinical trials. This was back in 2012, 
and they started doing the clinical trials shortly after. And last year, they finally got approval for one of the compounds in the screen that is now being used for treating uh, patients. So uh, just you know, using a single feature was useful for identifying this type of treatments, uh, but there is more information that we can use. And that is the so-called image-based profiling approach in which we try to uh, characterize cell state with a large number of uh, cellular features that we can measure on images. So the way we use the image-based profiling approach is uh, pretty much like this. We start with a uh, population of cells or any other uh, you know, uh, biological organism of interest. Uh, we can also use tissues or organoids or uh, even sometimes uh, living organisms that can be you know, uh, observed under the microscope. Uh, and we can um, perturb or treat those uh, cells using chemical or genetic perturbations. This is usually done with a multi-plate, well, multi-well plate formats in order to do high throughput experiments. And after um, a specified time point, we go and fix the cells and take pictures of cell state as, uh, as the treatment is happening. With all those images, we then run uh, image analysis software in order to identify single cells and characterize what are the shapes and many other properties that we can observe in those cells. And with those measurements, we proceed to do any downstream morphological analysis that can reveal the uh, successful treatments or any other properties that we are interested on. And this type of approach is useful for uh, different applications, including drug discovery and functional genomics. We review some of those applications in a paper that we published in 2016, in case you want to have a look at those. Uh, and uh, image-based profiling can work with uh, any type of, uh, you know, image, um, image assay or imaging assay that people develop in their labs. Uh, but cell painting specifically is uh, one assay that was uh, developed at the Broad Institute with profiling in mind, having, uh, uh, having the need for characterizing cell state in an unbiased way, trying to uh, capture as much uh, cellular state as possible in a single assay that is relatively easy to run. It, it has uh, six sustains, it's captured in five channels, and it basically reveals eight uh, main or major structures of the cell uh, in a single assay. With this, uh, we don't necessarily have to make the uh, initial hypothesis of what type of proteins or what type of markers we have to highlight. Uh, this is sort of a generic assay that captures the cell structure with um, many, uh, many useful uh, properties. We, here we can see uh, the basic stains that are part of the cell painting assay, including uh, markers for the nucleus, the ER, mitochondria, and so on. And uh, going back to our lung adenocarcinoma study, we created a collection of 353 alleles using this assay, covering most of the uh, alleles that were studied before with uh, gene expression uh, in order to um, analyze whether the phenotypic differences that we observe with imaging uh, somehow capture the same uh, you know, observations that we make with gene expression. This is done in collaboration with Alice Berger and uh, Anne Carpenter and uh, Jesse Boehm at the Broad Institute. So after we capture the images, the uh, computational workflow that we uh, use for transforming those images into quantitative information that we can use for downstream analysis are basically the, the following. So we start with uh, different conditions or different treatments that we want to analyze and for each of those, we capture images with multiple replicates. The second step is we process the images and we analyze um, where the single cells are located using segmentation algorithms. A segmentation algorithm basically identifies the region in which an, a single cell is being located. After we have those single cells, the next step 
is to compute multiple shape features or morphological features that characterize the cell state as observed in the image. Some of those features include uh, shapes, colors, textures, and many other properties that we can measure using image processing algorithms. In these matrices, uh, imagine we have single cells in the rows and cell properties in the columns or cell features. The next step is gonna be aggregating information for one specific treatment, pooling information from multiple cells that we have uh, in, the, in the images. And finally, with those uh, single, uh, sorry, with those uh, treatment signatures, we can go and analyze the uh, connections or differences between different treatments using the uh, appropriate downstream analysis, uh, which in this case is the question of whether the variants are impactful or non-impactful. So uh, here is uh, one example of uh, one specific allele, uh, which is uh, here in which we have the uh, wild type gene with eight replicates. These are the matrices that have uh, eight by eight uh, uh, similarities. And red means that you have high connectivity between those replicates. Blue means that there is low connectivity. So in this case, we see that, that the phenotype as observed in the images for the wild type cells is very consistent. Same for the mutant uh, allele in this case. But when we look at the correlation or cross correlation between the mutant and the wild type, we see that there is low connectivity or basically low similarity between the morphologies of the cells. And that means that uh, the mutant is having a different activity from the wild type. So we can hypothesize that this is an impactful mutation because the final phenotype as observed in images has many differences that don't correspond to the wild type. And we can look back in the images in the five different channels that we have in order to try to make sense of what are the mechanisms behind those differences. So uh, we, what we did uh, in this study was uh, first starting to uh, characterize uh, some of the benchmark mutations that uh, were part of the previous study as well. And uh, we found that using cell painting uh, we were able to classify 100% or well pretty much the 20 or 22 benchmark alleles in this list uh, correctly as impactful mutations uh, as was reported in prior work in other papers and that corresponds with the uh, uh, with the predictions of the L1000 uh, analysis that was done before a uh, part of the analysis also includes trying to uh, identify the directionality of the mutation. So uh, sometimes it's useful to uh, predict whether this is a change of function or loss of function mutation. Uh, but in, in the rest of the analysis, we only focus on uh, trying to identify whether it's impactful or not. Uh, after checking with those 22 uh, benchmark alleles, we extended the predictions uh, using uh, a larger pool of uh, mutations uh, in total, we had uh, about 140 mutations that were both characterized with uh, L1000 and cell painting. And uh, we wanted to see whether there was correspondence between both platforms. So in this uh, plot, what we have in the x-axis is the uh, negative log of the p-value um, that we measured with the L1000 signatures. And in the y-axis, we have the uh, negative log of the p-value obtained with the same test, but using cell painting signatures. So what we see is that uh, 97, in 97 of those cases, both platforms agree that those uh, mutations are impactful. We also observe that for 21 of those mutations, both platforms agree that they are non-impactful mutations. And we observe that uh, there are 16 cases in which L1000 indicates uh, impactful mutations, whereas cell painting uh, is not able to see any difference in those phenotypes. And the same happens with 26 of those alleles in which the L1000 platform doesn't see any phenotypic difference, but the cell painting assay is able to differentiate them and uh, identify uh, uh, phenotypic differences on those declaring them impactful. 
So uh, with these, we believe that there is a uh, potential for complementing the observations that we make in one or the other platform in order to resolve uh, some of those cases uh, more accurately. And also, uh, interpreting the uh, variant, uh, the impact of variants uh, can be done at single cell resolution using the images. Microscopy has been uh, single cell resolution since the 1600s. So in this case, we uh, leverage that ability in order to try to understand uh, uh, what's the uh, differences in morphology between the cells. So uh, for, for this specific case, the EGFR uh, uh, S645C mutation, we can see that there is a kind of a, a difference that we can observe by eye between the wild type uh, gene and the mutant gene. And this is just an example of how, you know, the cell painting images look uh, under a specific uh, single cell cases, but we are not restricted to only four examples that we can pull from the images. We can look at thousands of single cells that are in the replicates that we analyze. And then for each of those cells, we compute the single cell state using uh, uh, image analysis software. And each of those is projected using this TSNE plot uh, where we can see the population of uh, mutant cells in blue, uh, wild type cells in red, and the control cells in green. So what this plot is showing us is that the phenotype of the mutants uh, is occupying a different region of the feature space uh, with respect to the wild type population. And what that means is that there is uh, probably not necessarily a lot of overlap between the shapes and morphology of the cells that uh, we observe in the mutant with respect to the wild type. And this is sort of a qualitative uh, observation of, of the you know, entire cell population. But we can quantify this also uh, using some sort of uh, graph analysis algorithm in which we validate how many of those cells are independently separated from the rest of the uh, mutant cells and quantify uh, what's the overlap in the phenotypic space between the mutant and the wild type. Uh, we can characterize that. And uh, in this specific case, we see that 66% uh, of the single cells of the mutant population occupy a region in the feature space that is disconnected from the wild type uh, type of uh, feature space. And we use this as an indication of variant impact which is useful for uh, quantifying which of the uh, variants has a more impactful type of phenotype. Here is another example of another variant in which we observe uh, some of the wild type, uh, sorry, some of the mutant cells uh, occupying regions that are, you know, similar to the con control and wild type cells. And uh, that may indicate that um, uh, the, the impact uh, of this variant is spread in subpopulation. That is, it doesn't happen uh, all the time, but instead um, there is subpopulations that have uh, more impact than others. And we can run this analysis for many different mutations in parallel, uh, and we can run the uh, quantification of how much uh, of the mutant cells have different phenotypes with respect to the wild type cells. And we can also use that score in order to quantify what is the uh, mutations that, um, that have major impact in order to prioritize that in uh, future analysis. So uh, this is an example in which we don't observe uh, any major difference between the wild type cells and the mutant cells. So the red and the blue are basically occupying the same uh, region in the feature space indicating that the small differences that, that we see between the wild type and the mutants in the images are not really significant. And then they are basically all connected together in the same, uh, you know, mass of uh, phenotypic space. Uh, we, um, we are interested, this is ongoing work, and we are interested in analyzing how much, uh, you know, information we can gain uh, analyzing uh, single cells and also the heterogeneity, heterogeneity of cells. Uh, and in this case, we have um, uh, measurements of correlation that, uh, you know, look at the different replicates of the same um, mutation. 
And when we look at the aggregated profile using the you know, uh, average profile of a population of cells, we see a lot of consistency between those uh, aggregated profiles. But when we see it for the same mutation, uh, cell to single cell to single cell correlations are more spread out. And this indicates that there is a lot of heterogeneity that we can analyze and that we can exploit. Um, all of this analysis is being done with uh, new techniques that we are developing using deep learning in order to characterize the content of those images. Uh, in previous studies, we have used uh, classical features in order to separate those populations of cells. But using a new technique that we are developing, we are able to separate subtle phenotypes that were not possible to measure before uh, using uh, deep learning strategies. And what's remarkable in this specific case is that the neural networks that we're using to analyze single cells are able to uh, analyze, are able to find uh, relationships between subpopulations of cells that are not necessarily given during the training process. And what I mean by that is that uh, these three EGFR mutations in the bottom of the list are all clustered together in the bottom of the plot as well, indicating that the neural network is understanding that there is a relationship between the phenotypes that we observe uh, in the images. And that was information that was discovered automatically by the algorithm and not something that we used for training. So um, with that, uh, the conclusions of this work so far are that image-based profiling is as effective as transcriptional profiling for variant impact prediction. And uh, imaging is uh, cheaper and sometimes faster to prepare in different, it scales to you know, different infrastructures from very small labs to uh, uh, pharmaceutical type of labs. Uh, and uh, also cell painting in this case allows us to perform single cell analysis, which can also give us some in information about the heterogeneity uh, of cells and uh, a potential uh, other information that could be used. With that, I want to say thanks to the imaging platform at the Broad Institute, uh, to Alice Berger also, and the Bohem uh, lab uh, who collaborated with us in creating this project. So thank you so much. <laughs>